Hi, Nate Mullins here, and I'm going to show you a tr practical trigonometric application. This is for high school students uh, or, or anyone who's just learning trig and has a basic knowledge of geometry and algebra. And in this application, we're going to calculate the height of a tree. Calculate, not measure, obviously. And you'd have to climb the tree and dangle a tape measure down. It would be almost impossible, it would look ridiculous, and it would also be very dangerous. So we can simply calculate that from trig. And we can also calculate the sun angle. This, of course, has to be done on a sunny day. So here's, it always helps to draw a diagram. Here's the sun, here's its rays coming down. Here's the tree. That, now this is an actual real life problem I did. This is a, a Norwegian spruce that, that uh, still standing, like, like Elton John, still standing, despite getting hit by lightning in 2005. The tree's right in front of their house. And I've always wondered, when well, lightning tends to hit the highest object, I wondered exactly how tall the tree was. So that's what we're trying to solve for, and we're going to call the tree height H. That's this right here. And here comes the sun forming this angle, which we're going to call theta. And then here's the shadow that's cast along the ground from the tree. And we're going to call that the length of this shadow S. And we're going to make some important assumptions here. We're going to assume that First of all, the horizon of the, the ground is flat. If, it, if this were on a slope, we wouldn't have this nice right angle here. Or if you had a tree that was you know, bent quite a bit, uh, then it wouldn't apply. You also, um, so you want to have a, a flat surface. Otherwise, it's going to make the calculation much more difficult. You're going to have to figure out you know, how, how much you go up and down might require one of those uh, Garmin GPS devices. This is going to be much more complicated. You can still do it. Now, of course, if a shadow is cast onto a, an un, a really uh, rugged surface, then it's next to impossible. Also, if, the, you know, if, if that slope is greater than the sun angle, you can't do it because everything would be in the shadow. So we're going to also assume the tree, you know, nature trees grow more or less straight up. There's usually a slight deviation, but we're going to assume it's it's straight up, so therefore it forms this nice right angle with the ground forming this nice right triangle. We're also going to assume that the top of the tree, just like that spruce tree, is very pointy and well-defined. That wet way it creates a well-defined shadow, and you know where the tip of that, sh that shadow, you know where that shadow ends. Otherwise, I mean, if you have a big, wide canopy up here, you're actually not going to be measuring where the end of the shadow is, is not going to be measuring the height of the tree. And of course, we're assuming a nice sunny day. So the first step here is to get a measuring stick. I'm going to use a yardstick as an example throughout this problem. You can use a meter stick or just a, a regular ruler, whatever floats your boat. You want to hold it straight up, just like the tree grows straight up, on a flat surface, just like that, that ground horizon being flat and of course that would also form a right angle so you're going to then measure the length of the shadow that's cast by the yardstick so here it is here's the sun here is your yardstick which is you know is 36 inches and you can then measure x the length of the shadow cast by the yardstick and i determined that to be 28 inches and here, here's, of course, your angle theta. And here's the here's uh, a comparison here. These two triangles are actually congruent because you have the same angle. And uh, I note that here in this fourth step that you're, you want to do these measurements of, of S and X uh, in, in short succession. You don't want to wait a half hour between measurements. Otherwise, the sun angles are going to change, and then all your calculations are going to be be invalid. So you're then going to quickly uh, go over the tree. You go to the tip of the shadow, then go to the trunk of the tree, measure the length of the shadow. I got that as 72.5 feet. And we know from the basic trig that the tangent of this angle theta here in this triangle 
and in this triangle, the tangent of theta is equal to the side opposite the angle, which would in this case be y, over x, which is the adjacent side, it's adjacent is touching the angle. So the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And since these triangles are congruent, that's also, the tangent of theta is also equal to h over s. So you, you don't even have to worry about this. You can just set these two terms equal. You extract that and use y over x equals h over s. We measured both of these, x and s. We know y, so we can then solve for h. So 36 inches over 28 inches, and both of those can be divided through by 4 to give you a simpler ratio of 9 to 7. And, and note that the units cancel, inches over inches cancels. Even though we, we're using inches here and feet here, as long as it's at the same units in, in the respective numerators and denominators here, you have inches over inches and feet over feet, and in each case, the units cancel because we're just dealing with ratios here. So now we're going to actually go through and solve for h. We're going to cross multiply, so we're going to get 7h is equal to 9 times 72.5. That gives you 652.5. That's 7h. And so to solve for h, you would just divide 652.5 by 7, and there you go, get, you get the height of the tree, 93 feet, so it is a pretty tall tree. And finally, remember I said we were going to calculate the sun angle. Uh, we know the tangent, we actually know the tangent of the angle, which is the ratio of 9 over 7. You could use the other one too, uh, 93 over 72.5, but I'm using 9 over 7 just because those are easier numbers to work with. And you're going to use... Tan, you're going to take tan to the minus one. That should be, if you have a graphic uh, scientific calculator, you probably have that function built in. You might have to have hit a shift or function key or something, but uh, you, you do that tan to the minus one of nine seven, or in, if you want to do it in Microsoft Excel, you can use the arctan function. Now tan to the minus one, just a, a brief note here, is not the same thing as one over tangent. One over the tangent is actually the cotangent which would be the reciprocal of this, or 7 ninths. That's not where we're after here. We're trying to solve for the angle. So you take the arctan, or tan to the minus 1, of 9, 7, plug that in, and I believe if you do an Excel, it will automatically spit out the answer in radians. You get 0.91, or if your calculator is set to radians. And to convert that to degrees, now if your calculator is in degrees, it should give you 52 degrees, but if it's not, you can simply multiply by 180 degrees over pi radians. So you multiply by 180 over pi, and that gives you 52 degrees. So there's a nice practical trig application for you.